Uh, good afternoon, Kimar. Um, very happy to see you in this Zoom meeting. Uh, <laughs> first of all, welcome uh, to Anderlecht because we didn't have a chance yet to see you play, but uh, we, we hear only nice things about you. And I believe that since your childhood, football was in your blood. Yeah, um, appreciate you having me. Um, we would rather to have this conversation in person, but <laughs> the current situation, um, you know, we are, we definitely understand what's going on and uh, we have to respect it. Um, yeah, growing up, I started to play from a tender age, probably five, six or three year, years old. I, I, I grew up with living with three uncles um so they were all competitive all of them played um football at some level back in jamaica and my dad was a goalkeeper um for jamaica national team and he went he went to um one of the best schools in jamaica won around three championships there so it's definitely something that's in my blood and um, I just continue that um, trend growing up. I just never stopped. I started early and I just never stopped. Sorry about the cliche, but uh, I'm a big fan of Bob Marley. And, you know, when we think Jamaica, we think Bob Marley. <laughs> well, well, yeah. Who and, does it? <laughs> yeah. And he inspired a lot of people. And um, he said something incredible about, about football. Uh, besides his music, he said, football is freedom. Yeah, it's it's a way of life. And in Jamaica, in J Jamaica is, is, it's really different. Our culture is unique. And football is just a way to express yourself back home. Sometimes in our country, because of the poverty, and some of the stuff going on, you have a lot of violence at times, like just inner city violence. So when I go back to play for Jamaica or when we have a tournament, say, for instance, the Gold Cup, whichever tournament, or we just have a couple of games, the, in that time, in that moment, you can see in the country, like the crime rate and stuff, like this, it takes a pause for a little bit. Because everybody focuses now, like, on the team. Let's see what these guys are going to do. Let's put some effort in these guys. Let's cheer them on. And when we win, it's like, it's a whole different vibe in the country. You get me? But just growing up, I, I, I play street ball, like, every day. Yeah. Every day. And you have to be there early because um, we had a, we had a, a field that we call it Azteca back home but it's like it we played on concrete but it was small it was 5v5 but i'm telling you it was it was it was amazing there's nothing like it and in every community in jamaica you have like that going on every single day so it's just it's just passionate so i, I really get my passion from there and every time i step onto the field now i i still think about me as a 12 year old or 11 year old playing there with my friends, you know, and I was probably more aggressive there than I am now. <laughs> so you really you have modeled your life around your passion. It must be brilliant. Yeah. You must be very, very happy. I am. I am. Um, I'm from a community where it's, 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 it's not easy growing up, seeing a lot of the things that I see. And I tend to not talk about it because sometimes you talk about things and people push it, push it aside like it's common, but it's it's really not common. We 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 face a lot of stuff um, growing up, and I watched a lot of my friends died um, to violence, some to drugs, a, a bunch of different things, and. And to make it out of that community, it's just it's just a blessing, you know. And I, that's one of the things that I really always thank God for because without God, that I know that wouldn't be possible. But it's also a joy, you know, to go back and to see the love and the camaraderie everybody shares, and you know, the appreciation everybody has for me. So it, 
it's fun and so that's why sometimes that's where I get my energy from you know sometimes I just sit back and I think about where I'm coming from and you know it brings a joy to my heart because the people there they're loving towards me and they're caring so thanks to you will be the club will be very popular in Jamaica <laughs> from yeah. now. Oh, the club is already <laughs> <laughs> okay do you yeah, you, I, I browsed to, through your career and uh, it's really consistent. You really did it step by step. You won two championships in uh, Jamaica, played several seasons there. Then you went for five seasons to uh, New York, um, where you became a consistent fixed player. You played nearly every game. And yeah. Sasha Kleston, you know, our former midfielder, is extremely positive about you. I, didn't, I don't know if you saw the interview with him. Uh, he said that you have an incredible hard tackle and that every <laughs> right-wing player must be afraid of you. <laughs> <laughs> I probably tackle... Um, I, I, you have guys on the team, on, on the past Red Bulls team, that I probably tackle harder than anybody else in the world. Just because, just because these guys were so good especially Sasha, he has an eye for everything. His, his intelligence in the game is top-notch. He, he knows how soft to touch the ball. He knows how quickly to move it. He knows when, always knows when to take two-touch or one-touch. So when I'm approaching him, I, I have to always be smart in the way I approach him. And... When I'm tackling him, I have to make sure I tackle him to be like, yo, Sasha, don't come back here, bro. I don't, I don't need you here. Go somewhere else. <laughs> so, so for the top guys on my team, I always play the hardest against them because I feel like if I can lock down the top guys on my team back then, which we had the best team um, back then, if I could lock down these guys that scoring um, 15 goals, 10 goals, 12 goals a season, then – Nobody else in the league is going to get past me. So I, I worked at that every single day. And he helped me. Um, if I had any question, he was always there to answer. And he was never too busy to say, Kem, you know, this is what you need to do or that's what you need to do. As long as you, 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 had, you were humble enough to approach him and, you know, Sasha, um, can you help me? He would always try to help you out. It, doesn't matter um, what it is. He's a good guy, um, a guy that I learned to appreciate more in my career and a guy that I respect and a guy that I learned to call my friend. And he's a great family guy, you know, him, his wife, his kids, uh, just a, a great bunch of people. He's the ultimate team player, I believe. U ultimate team player. I'm one of the best, I have to say, one of the best um, captains I, I had to. Talking about captains, how is it for you to work with, uh, because I, I presume you follow football, Premier League, uh, international football, how is it to work with Vincent Company? be honest, it's, 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 it's I, I, I'm not going to say like every other footballer, because it's not, because he's top-notch in the way that he carries himself. You can see that professionalism in him just flowing. Also, the way that he approaches a game. He makes mistakes, just like any other player. He makes mistakes. But the thing that he, he trains his mind to do is that he was trying to do something good. So when a mistake's happening, he doesn't stop. He continues until he gets it right. So that's one of the things um, so far I'm trying to learn from him. You know, when, you, when you're trying to make that pass and you get that pass wrong, don't, don't stop. You're trying to you're trying the right thing, so continue to doing the right thing. Uh, you're an experienced player. Eh? You're uh, 27, 28 now, uh, in the prime of your football life. Um, how do you see our own youth? Because we have a lot of young, talented <laughs> players playing uh, for Anderlecht and playing with you. Yeah. Uh, did you ever play in such a young uh, team? No. Um, to be honest, no. And when um, my first two weeks coming in, coming into the team, trying to get fit and everything. I, I, you know, I'm watching training sessions. I'm watching video clips, and I'm looking at the age group, and I'm like, all right, um, we, we, we're a young, we're a young group, but we are really, really talented, and we are hardworking. It's just not talent alone. 
So approaching that second to third week, I'm in my mind, I'm just telling myself, um, I know I need to be, when I start to play, I need to be good at what I do. But I feel like I also have to become a good leader right away because I feel like for us to win a championship going forward, in tough moments, we are going to need guys to to lead. And I feel like um, one of that, one of those guys have to be me, that responsibility. I have to be ready to um, take that responsibility on because sometimes with a young group, sometimes you know a little bit of inexperience shows in, in games where we need to maybe hold the ball a little bit more to close out the games or go into the corner flag or, you know, something to something that requires a little bit more experience. So that's one of the things that I've been thinking about. Uh, I need to learn every, but not only my position, but everybody else's position. So that way I can make it easier for my teammates. And that way it's easier for us to win. Because if everybody on the team knows where everybody should be or um, should go, then I feel as a team, we will, we will be successful. So your role will be crucial as a mentor for those uh, for these young guys. Uh, you live uh, you live now a few months in Brussels in Belgium. Uh, I suppose that your integration was facilitated by Amir Morillo, your former teammate from. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't do nothing. He doesn't do. <laughs> he knows as much as I. I probably know way more than him, and he's been here longer. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't do anything. He doesn't cook. He doesn't. I can't even go. I can't even go over for dinner. He has to come here for dinner. I can't. <laughs> so you have to integrate him. I then. called him two days ago and I was like, "Yo, what are you cooking?" He's like, "What you want?" I'm like, "I know you can't cook, bro." So, <laughs> so but did you go already to the city? Into the city and, and, oh, yeah, and explore we, a bit the surroundings. Yeah, we've been in the city. We've been, uh, we scoot a bike. But it, it was earlier before the pandemic, though. Uh, we, yeah. we scoot, me and him, we scoot a bike around. We had made some plans as well to kind of travel around to f figure stuff out. Mm -hmm. But um, this the, the, the pandemic happened and we kind of just canceled, canceled everything. Yeah, it's a bit <laughs> too early to judge because it's uh, your... Uh, coming is very fresh, I would say. Yeah. But what are your first impressions of the city and, and the country? Um, when I when I just came here, I realized that everything is close, and I realized, <laughs> yeah, yeah, every even the, even the road, yeah. even the road, coming from the US, you know, I have like some massive highways, and <laughs> so I'm like, like, everything is a bit closer than um, I'm used to, but. Um, so far, the people are warm, welcoming. Um, the people are calm, especially the people I've been around. You know, I've been around mostly people from the club, and I have to say, um, these um, I haven't feel not welcome. I felt welcome every single day I've been here. Um, when I ask questions, I I get um the response that I'm looking for. Um. The only thing it would be, I would say, is a big difference to me is probably the language. And I realize that a lot of the people here, they speak English. Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of the people they speak English. We're a country we've been dominated throughout history, so we had to adapt all the time. That's a strength yeah. that we have in in this yeah. country. So I re I, re I realize that even in the store, going to store, I realize a lot of the people um, speak English. When you go to a lot of different countries. You can't get that, so you know that's that's something to appreciate too. Good. When this uh, crisis is over and we're allowed to come out, I will take you around in Brussels. Yeah. <laughs> no, bro. You will need. We will need one little day or an afternoon. You will understand <laughs> how that. it works. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do was like see the mountain side because I know there's a lot of farming that takes place um, mm -hmm. in this country and stuff like that. So one other thing, because I know you guys must have like beautiful mountain sides and stuff like that. And yes. I'm from Jamaica, so we have like a lot of mountains. So. They're not very high, but we have mountains. Um, uh, do you have hobbies? Do you, is there something you would like to share with the fans that we to don't know honest, about you? To be honest, um, I like to chill with my kids. <laughs> to, to, 
to be honest, I I I just like to be around my kids most time. When I'm not playing football, I like to take my mind away from stuff, just relaxing with my kids or chilling with my friends. Because me and my friends from high school, all of us are still friends. Mm -hmm. So I like to be back home in, in my country, just relaxing, chilling with my family. When I'm not chilling with my family, relaxing with my friends. But when I'm alone, um, I like to I like to read, but I like to read Bible-related um, books. So if it's not the Bible, it's something related to the Bible. Um, when I'm not doing that, I'm listening um, some music. Um, but mostly right now, right now mostly I'm playing Call of Duty. I'm playing. I'm playing that game twenty four seven. Okay, so that's. Because all my friends call me now, they're like, yo, we know you ain't got nothing to do but stay inside after you finish training. So get on. So that's what I do mostly now. Okay. Thank you very much for doing this. Uh, I'm sure the fans will enjoy this little talk. And uh, I hope everything goes well and that you can see each other very soon. Thank you, man. I um, really appreciate it. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's messed up what's um, going on in the world. We understand that, you know, a lot of family lost um, loved ones, and you know, my prayer goes out to those family. Um, um, just know that um, God is with you, and uh, no matter what happens, you know, God, God will always be there. He will make things right one day. So, uh, appreciate you fans. I appreciate, appreciate this club, and I appreciate being here. Thanks, my family. Thank you very, very much. Thank uh, you. No problem. All right. And uh, we see each other soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.